look at the uh, people who have led this revolution in horsemanship, which started in the late 70s, and, uh, uh, and, and I know uh, most of them personally, uh, those that haven't passed on, and uh, nearly all of them have an artistic talent. Uh, but even they didn't uh, attach a connection uh, between their talent and art. But I believe there is a genetic link there. And I think uh, the horse, there's something, uh, I don't mean, I'm not talking about just liking horses like people like animals. I'm talking about uh, an emotional response to horses that uh, uh, is very, very unique and special. Uh, and uh, that is it somehow linked to this artistic ability. I'm I'm making notes because I'm just intrigued. I'm going to go and, and Google a bunch of this stuff. You know, I, I just found out that you, I saw this, The Revolution in Horsemanship, you co-authored that book as well with Rick Lamb. Yes, uh, that's right. And it wouldn't happen without Rick. I told Rick that I wanted to write this book, and uh, it was turned down. Uh, when I first retired, because uh, the publisher said, this may be just a fad. And I said, no. I said, this is going to change horsemanship forever. It's going to sweep the world. I just know it. And uh, two years later, they called me and said, well, looks like you're right. Uh, let's do the book. And I said, unfortunately, I have gotten so busy uh, with invitations uh, to lecture uh, all over the world uh, and invitations and suggestions to do books and articles that I just don't have time to do it. And I told that story to Rick, and then he called me uh, at home and said, uh, look, let's do the book together. And I said, I told you, I, don't, I just don't have the time. I'd have to give up what I'm doing now. And he said, look, he said, I'll do all the research. I'll do the uh, half the chapters on the history of horsemanship. I'll do the negotiation and find a publisher. I'll do all the, the computer work. And he says, all the illustrations, all you have to do is write the other half of the chapters. And I said, gee, that's the easy part for me. <laughs> so that's how it happened. It, we would, that book wouldn't have happened without him. And uh, then I did the sequel by myself, which was The Natural Horsemanship Explained. Well, both of those books are staples in my library. I absolutely adore The Revolution in Horsemanship. It was given to me. Um, I was teaching in uh, a clinic that was helping like kind of big-time CEO people um, become better leaders through horsemanship. And some of these people, I'm sure you've seen this phenomenon yourself, they'd get in the round pen with the horse and just be all, you know, hotty toddy and have all their specific ideas about how it should go. And then by the end of it, they are, you know, weeping in, in the corner with the horse because they're so touched by it. And I, I was given that book by one of these, um, one of my clients at this uh, retreat that we did, they sent me the book and just said, this book is so great. And I have loved it ever since. So I, it's cool to make that connection that you're the one that's responsible for that book with, between you and Rick. Yeah. The, the horse is the most unique of all domestic animals. Uh, and, uh, I think played the most important role in human history uh, up until a hundred years ago when it was uh, largely replaced by the uh, internal combustion engine. Uh, but the horse is the only creature that I know of. And I might add that I was a zoo veterinarian throughout my career. So I've worked with every conceivable animal uh, <laughs> that you can think about. Uh, uh, but the horse is the only animal that born in the wild and never having seen or had a, a human being or had human contact, you can bring it in after maturity. It can be 2, 5, 10, 12 years of age. Capture it, a uh, wild animal. And if you use these techniques that uh, we've come to call natural horsemanship, the techniques described in uh, revolution in horsemanship, if you know how to use them, understand them, in three hours, you can have that animal gentle, bonded to you, uh, and you can be sitting on its back. There's no other creature in the world like that. It's so cool. I agree. It's, they're one of the only truly domesticatable creatures. Yeah, it's uh, th that factor makes the horse a gift to mankind. It does. It that was so beautifully put and very eloquent. Yeah, and of course the horse 
in our society has now occupies a completely different role, but just as important a role, and that's as a companion animal. Uh, just certainly as important to many people as the dog is. Absolutely, myself included. I, I see that you do do some stuff um, with with dog behavior as well on your site. Um, you got all sorts of cool stuff on here, man. I could just spend all day looking around here.